Okay, section 4.6. We're going to start throwing in a few details in regards to acids and bases. We've sort of ended the broad definitions. We're specifically going to talk about what are strong acids versus weak acids, and strong bases versus weak bases. First off, strong and weak refer to the percent they ionize. Where concentration refers to the moles dissolved in of a certain volume, like liters. So whether you're weak or strong is how much you ionize. Weak ones ionize very little, strong ones ionize a lot. And concentration is moles per liter, that's big M, we know that. So we're going to use those words very specifically. You can be concentrated and strong, like HCl is a strong acid, and 10 molars, pretty strong. Or you can be dilute, dilute and still strong. HCl is still a strong acid, and we'll explain why in a minute, but the concentration is very, very low. So specifically, a strong acid ionizes 100%. So 100% of this HCl will turn into these products, okay? All of that HCl will ionize, all of that HCl will react with the water. So just to put that into perspective, what exactly are we talking about? Well, what is the concentration of HCl in one molar HCl? Well, it's actually zero, okay? There is no HCl, 100% of it is ionized. 100% of it turns into Cl minus, so that's going to be one molar and H plus, that's going to be one molar. There is no HCl present in molar HCl. That's going to be weird for you to think about. So specifically, what's the concentration of H3O in 0.2 molar HCl? Well, 0.2. So what that means is the concentration of H3O plus equals the concentration of your strong acid because your strong acid ionizes 100%. Your weak acid does not ionize 100%. In fact, it kind of ionizes like less than 5%. So there is no like 66% and 78%. It's 100 or less than 5. Okay? When you're a weak acid, you're going to be in equilibrium. You're going to be going back and forth. When you're a strong acid, you only go one way. You can't go backwards because it ionizes 100%. So strong acids have a single arrow and weak acids have a double arrow, and that's on your chart as well. Strong bases and weak bases are the exact same thing. Strong bases ionize 100, weak bases don't. So in your acid table, if you want to flip to that in your data booklet now, we're just going to go over a few trends. I'm not going to th read through these notes exactly because we're going to deal with a ton of this over the next few days, but just a couple of big trends. I want to start off at the top of the table, left-hand side. These are your strong acids. These ionize 100%. Notice how they all got single arrows in our notes, and they got single arrows in your data table. Underneath those top six are your weak acids. Notice how they all have double arrows. H3O+, that's a weak acid. Okay, It's in equilibrium with an H+, and H2O. also going to notice that right about here on your chart, those bottom two things, they have a single arrow to the left, which means those are strong bases. Okay, they're strong bases. They'll, they'll never, 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 never act as an acid. Okay, and as you go down that right hand side of your chart, the bases will get stronger and stronger and stronger, obviously, until, until you get there. A couple little details. They didn't put every single strong base on this chart to save some space. Strong base is defined as you have to ionize 100%. And if you ionize 100%, you're a strong base. So all of these things, all of these column ones, basically what you learned in Chem 11 and Science 10, what are strong bases? They end in OH. Well, those are still strong bases. Same with these. Those are still strong bases. MgOH2, BaOH2, SROH2, even though we classify them as low solubility, but the stuff that does dissociate um, releases OH 100% of the time, so it's a strong base. Okay, so those actually are not on your chart, but you just need to know that those are strong bases. Um, you got to pay attention to ratios. 
So in BaOH2, there's one of those and there's two of those. Well, we don't really care about Ba in regards to acids and bases, so we care about that that thing is going to yield double the amount of OHs. So if you start off with 0.1 molar BaOH2, well, you're going to get 0.2 molar OH, and we're going to do some stuff with that number later on in the later on in the chapter. There's one sneaky little question that I guarantee will be on uh, your quiz and your test. It always is. This is the one that just burns people. O minus two classified as a strong base, and when you're O minus two, you're going to accept a proton, and you're going to turn into an OH and an OH. And well, guess what? That's two OHs. So if you start off with 0.1 molar CaO, you're actually going to get 0.1 molar O minus 2, but O minus 2 is going to yield 0.2 molar OH minus. It's going to burn a lot of you. Pay attention to that. O minus 2 will give you double the amount of OHs. In terms of weak bases, they're found above OH minus on the right hand side of your chart, and they increase in strength going down. On the top of the on the right side of your chart are spectators. Anything that's opposite of a single arrow will never react to go backwards. They will always be spectators. Okay? And there are five of them. The top five things on the right hand side aren't bases, aren't acids, but are spectators. And you're just going to get used to seeing that. What does all of this stuff mean? Well, there's just a couple of big trends that you're going to need to know. And it is, the higher the acid on the left equals the stronger acid, the lower the base on the right equals the stronger base. And the big one, the stronger the acid equals the weaker conjugate pair. The opposite of that is also true. The stronger the base, the weaker its conjugate acid. Okay, Those are our general trends. One other tiny point, if the acids are on the left hand side and the bases are on the right hand side, what happens if you're on both sides? Well those things are called amphiprotic. They can be acids or bases. They can donate or accept a proton. So if you're just looking at this part of your period of your data table, HCO3 is below C6H5OH. So this is a weaker acid than C6H5OH, but a stronger acid than H2O2. But you'll also notice that HCO3 minus is on the base side of things. So bases increase going down in strength going down that side. So HCO3- minus is weaker than C6H5O7, but it's stronger than the AlH2O5. If you're on both sides of the chart, you're amphiprotic, and you can act as an acid or a base, except this. You're going to notice that H2SO4 along the top has a single arrow to make HSO4 minus. HSO4 minus is also found a little way down the left hand side, so it is a weak acid. HSO4 minus is not an amphiprotic ion, and it's also not a spectator because it is called a weak acid. I'll point that out to you again tomorrow. One other little definition the leveling effect. The leveling effect says that the top six acids are equally as strong. So they all ionize 100%. You can't rank the top six acids. Okay, They're all strong. Bottom bases are equally as strong. You can't rank strong things. They ionize 100%. Other than that, folks, there's not much else to um, not much else to talk about in this chart. We're going to be flipping through this chart a ton. You're going to get all the little details as we go. 
and we're going to work through um, a couple of problems in groups tomorrow and you'll, you'll dial this whole chart in. See you tomorrow.